Let the post-game trial lawyers start their engines. At this hour, the legal world is scrutinizing the verdict handed down to Elizabeth Holmes, seen leaving last night after that verdict. She's the founder of failed blood testing startup Theranos. The jury found her guilty on four of the 11 charges of fraud. Holmes had raised more than $945 million from high-profile investors, including the Walmart founding Walt Walton family and the family of former Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, along with FBN parent Fox Corporation's Rupert Murdoch. The now-disgraced golden girl of Silicon Valley faces decades in prison with each of the four charges carrying a maximum sentence of 20 years. So will the verdict spread a chill across the fake-it-till-you-make-it culture of Silicon Valley? Business Insider columnist and Fox Business contributor Adam Lashinsky has been covering every second of this trial. He joins us in a TV exclusive. Adam, let's start with the split decision verdict. Guilty of defrauding investors, but not on the fraud counts of defrauding patients. Distill that for us. Sure. And the, the famous family investor names that you just mentioned, those were specifically the investors that she was found guilty of defrauding. There was a different set of investors, Smaller Fry, who invested earlier on, where the jury could not reach a verdict. They were deadlocked on that, a hung jury on those three counts. So what mm -hmm. the jury was effectively saying, later in the game, when, you, when she knew things weren't working, she lied to those big money investors. That's what she was convicted of. That's why she's going to jail. They they found her not guilty on all four of the patient counts. And what I read into that is that the defense did a good job of kicking up a, a, a dust and, and, and suggesting, well, there were all these medically astute executives who were in charge of the testing, who were between Elizabeth Holmes and the patients, and they planted a seed of reasonable doubt in the jury's minds that she was mm. guilty of those accusations of defrauding patients. Let's just remind our viewers, there were patients who used Theranos and were told they were HIV positive. They were not. There were those who said they had miscarried and had not, or vice versa. It's horrific for the patients. I'm sure many of them are not happy right now. But each of the counts upon which she was found guilty are uh, carry about a 20-year sentence. I understand she could serve those concurrently or not. How much prison time does she face? Well, I, I, I just read something uh, from a former U.S. attorney. It's very credible to me. It was news to me that, that it could be as much as 65 years and that it is supposed to be consecutively. Now, the judge has discretion. She doesn't have a criminal record. Um, she does have a baby. That didn't seem to sway the, the jury. It could sway the judge because he's a human being, too. So um, these are the things that everybody will be talking about. There's a hearing next week to set a sentence date for some point in the future. Well, I mean, nobody seemed to care when Raj Rajaratnam, he had children and he was sentenced to prison for insider trading. He served his time. But, you know, I, I just failed to see how having a family should weigh into any kind of criminal act where somebody's found guilty. That said, uh, we do have to ask, she's going to appeal, obviously, right? What are her chances of overturning a federal verdict? Well, uh, I, I wrote a piece a couple months ago where I uh, took the judge, Judge Edward Davila, to task for the endless delays in this case, what I, and for allowing the defense to, in particular, to drag on and on and on. Now, what I see, I wrote this also at the time, and what I see now is he bent over backwards to be fair to the defense, to her lawyers. He gave them everything that they wanted in terms of making procedural motions and questioning witnesses. You know, to, this non-lawyer sees very little opportunity for her to, to mount a credible mm -hmm. appeal because of that. Okay. He went by the book. Really quickly, Adam, uh, Silicon Valley was watching this. They called it the trial of their century, certainly. Uh, certainly, I would imagine this puts a major freeze or chill on that fake it till you make it. Yeah, we'll make big promises, but we'll get there eventually kind of culture. What does this do to the startup I, world in the Valley? I, I I would say a minor chill, and if, and if we just come back to parsing the two sets of investors, you know, if you if you want to if you want to literally read this case, if you make puffed up claims to early stage investors when you haven't done anything yet, you're going to be fine. If you make puffed up claims that are clearly a lie and clearly wrong based on what's going on right now, that's what she was convicted of. Gotcha. Adam Lashinsky, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. My pleasure, time. Liz. A long trial comes to an end, but there may be that appeal.